We begin our report on the campaign trail. Donald Trump and Kamala Harris traveled to battleground states Thursday for the first time since their debate earlier this week. Former president traveled to the western border state of Arizona while the vice president is focusing her energy on North Carolina, a state that went to Trump the last two elections. The two won't see each other on the debate stage again, it seems. Thursday, Trump put the kibosh on that. Meanwhile, Harris gained yet another Republican endorsement. Former attorney general under President George W. Bush, Alberto Gonzalez, he announced his support for the Democrat Thursday. He called Trump, quote, the most serious threat to the rule of law in a generation. In the rule of law in Georgia, a judge threw out two of the 10 charges against Trump in the Fulton County election interference case that is on hold for the moment. The judge said the charges of conspiracy to commit filing false documents and conspiracy to commit forgery belonged in federal court. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns joins me now from Tucson, Arizona. So, Caitlin, is that it for the debates? No debates? It's over? No more? Well, well, John, good to see you. As you may know, when it comes to Donald Trump, never say never, but he did make it pretty clear today through a so true social post and actually starting off his rally here in Tucson, Arizona, by saying there will not be a third debate. And he also took to the stage here in Arizona and right off the bat in this first post-debate rally, uh, spent a significant amount of time criticizing the debate moderators, calling the debate rigged, uh, really kind of feeding into the rhetoric that we saw from his campaign in the wake of that performance and declaring victory uh, in his words from that debate, but at the same time arguing that he doesn't want to do another one. Now, CBS News has offered another debate in October for the two presidential candidates. We'll see if any minds are changed uh, before then. We also, of course, are having a vice presidential debate on October 1st that is still on the books, of course. But uh, it's telling John that uh, the former president spending the top of his speech, which, you know, he's coming here to focus on immigration and the economy, but focusing the top of this appearance on criticizing the moderators of that debate a couple of nights ago. Fascinating. Uh, all right, so let's stay with um, former President Trump for the moment. What, what's the sense, and I know he's just started talking, but about how he's going to spend basically the next 54 days? Yeah, well, it's telling John that he chose Arizona to come to after that debate. Uh, Arizona, as you mentioned, is a key battleground state, a state that Donald Trump lost by just about under 11,000 votes, and polls show that it is very close here. He's been here four times over the course of the 2024 cycle, and I was with him covering him just a couple of weeks ago when he was here in Tucson and also made a visit to the southern border. They're really trying to focus on the issue of of immigration, especially here in Arizona, but really across these battleground states, and also the economy. A specific portion of the economy here in Arizona, they want to focus on the issue of unaffordable housing. And we see in our own CBS News poll a couple of months ago in Arizona, a majority, vast majority of voters feel like it is almost impossible to buy a house more difficult than it was for their parents' generation and their work. So those are the issues the campaign would like to focus on. But as we saw in that debate, uh, this is a candidate who goes off script and doubles down those controversial uh, and debunked claims that he made about Springfield, Ohio in that debate. I will say just a few minutes ago, he echoed here in remarks. Caitlin, you're doing an amazing job with the crowd behind you. People are getting a taste of what it's like a little bit to be at a Trump rally. The final question for you is about North Carolina and the other campaign, the Harris campaign. Do they really think it's in play? This is the hardest of the battleground states by the traditional assumptions. Um, give us your thoughts. That's right, John. Ever since Barack Obama won it in 2008, Democrats have been trying to repeat that uh, dynamic and have been unsuccessful. I interviewed Democratic Governor Roy Moore, uh, sorry, excuse me, Roy Cooper, excuse me, Roy Cooper a couple of nights ago at the debate, and he said the reason that he thinks it's actually in play now 
as opposed to when Biden was, was the, uh, of all the, the states that Donald Trump won, he won North Carolina by the smallest of margins in 2020. So they believe the ground has been fertile for them, especially with young voters and African American voters in that state. The key here is having a new candidate that could perhaps energize and activate them. It's also a state, when you look at the South, it uh, has a, a Democratic governor. There's a key governor's race as well. So those kinds of races could be tied, but it will be an uphill climb. And the CARES campaign is hoping that by spending time there, they also hope they also will force Republicans to spend time and money uh, in that state that they should have in their column. Caitlin Huey Burns in the middle of a Trump rally in Tucson. Thanks a lot, Caitlin.